Good Friday is a solemn day. It begins very simply with this. Blessed be our God forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, we pray you graciously to behold this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and given into the hands of sinners and to suffer death upon the cross, who now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. It's all so customary to begin Good Friday with profound silence and perhaps even laying prostrate. Every Good Friday, the clergy at St. Luke's lay prostrate on the floor. This year, I hope you'll join us at home. Take a quiet moment to find a spot that's maybe comfortable or maybe not so comfortable and to lay prostrate and to reflect a little bit on the events of this day. Join me while I do just that. I hope you took time to experience Good Friday with your body by laying prostrate on the floor. It's a little odd, but it's one of the most powerful things that I do every year. Lay right here on Good Friday and remember the story. I think that's what Holy Week is about. Remembering the story, not with our minds, but with our bodies. I recently heard a story that I felt in my body, even though I had never experienced it. It was a story of a young man who traveled as part of a youth pilgrimage back to Germany. He was Jewish, and his family, his grandparents, had been in the Holocaust and both survived. They'd been taken to the same concentration camp. And the grandfather had done everything in his power to take care of his bride, even though they were split into two different camps. They'd meet at the fence, and he'd smuggle over whatever bit of food he could have, or just even to spread a word of love to her across the fence on the other side of the camp where the females were. One day when they were visiting, his grandmother cut his arm, cut her arm rather, on the fence, the barbed wire fence. And it got horribly infected. I mean, it's not fatal except if you were a Jew in a concentration camp without medicine, which she was. She happened to be helping um, a young Polish man who was running a laboratory, and they had rabbits in the laboratory. And he liked her, and he wanted her to survive and not die. So what this doctor did, courageously, was he cut his own arm in the exact same spot where she had cut hers. And they took her arm, and he took his arm, and he linked the two wounds so that he'd have the exact same kind of infection that she had. And so when his wound got infected, he was able to go to his 
Nazi employers, and I say employers loosely here, these were Nazi soldiers who had conscripted him to do these experiments. He went to them and said, look, you need me. I'm doing powerful work for you, and I've got this cut and this infection. I need medicine. They gave him the medicine. And then he split it in two and gave it to her as well. And this grandson had traveled back to Germany to meet this man who was still alive and to thank him for his life. I kind of think that's the story of Good Friday. That we were wounded, mostly because of our own way of refusing love in this world. We, we were wounded and God tried to help us by sending God's own son down to be with us, to take on our wounds, to take on our afflictions, to know our situation. That on Good Friday, what Jesus did for us was to take his arm to our wound and to get the same ailments that we had so that he could be the medicine for us. But the medicine didn't come easily. It wasn't magic. It took the sacrifice of love for that magic, that loving magic to really work. We know that the real magic of the world is love. Really, when I lay like this on the floor, what I think about is kind of like a hug. Because when your arms are out like this, it's really one of the few times where reaching out is open and vulnerable is in love. So when I think about Good Friday, what I think about is the hug that God gives to each of us is a, a loving embrace to be the medicine for the wound that's in each of us. So on this Good Friday, I invite you to embrace God's love to feel it deep in your bodies and not just in your minds, but to feel it physically. This is the story. This is why this Friday is good, because God loved us and hugged us with his son through pain and suffering, charted for us the way forward so that we might have the same sort of healing powers of love for others. Next, what happens in the service is we often take time to venerate the cross. So I invite you to think about your house, if there's a cross somewhere that you might be able to hold. And join me as we venerate the cross. If you've never been to a Good Friday service, one of the chief acts we do is venerate the cross. And you can venerate the cross in many ways. Normally, one venerates the cross by, by kissing it. That can seem a bit zealous, I think, if you're a, a typical Episcopalian, or maybe if you have found the Episcopal Church th through a more Protestant tradition. But what I think the veneration of the cross is all about is really kind of like this sense of engaging with the story in, in material ways. It's a way of cherishing the whole story, cherishing the act, cherishing the wounds, cherishing the healing that comes through it. Whenever I stand and hold the cross for people as they venerate it, I, I kind of think I'm doing something special, like holding up the important work of, of some person. Kind of like it's the same sort of veneration you get when you hold a, a new baby. Have you ever held a new baby before? When you just kind of hold them in your arms and they're super light but oddly heavy. Like the whole world is in your hands. Like they're the greatest gift and that they're super sacred. That moment of you just holding that child is everything. I kind of think that's how it is to venerate the cross. Just to hold 
onto that moment of great solemnity, of great service, of great love. Babies love us in, in, in ways that we know because they're so dependent on us. And in a way, it allows us for a moment to take the role of a parent with the one who really is the, is the parent for us, the baby. And so I always cherish the opportunity to venerate the cross as a way of intimately engaging um, and, and, and bittersweet thankfulness. It's always a wonder how this day, this Friday is called good when it's filled with so much pain and darkness. But it's good in the way that all things that have real import are. All things that are lived fully into the moment are. So I invite you to take a cross in your house, whatever cross you may find, even if it's the, the palm cross you may have gotten in the mail from St. Luke's or, or Grace Episcopal Churches this week. I invite you to take that cross and to hold on to it for a while, to feel it, to touch it, to feel its hardness, maybe its roughness as well. Treat it like a baby, the weight of the world that you're holding, and also that it's so tender and sweet. If you feel moved at some point to kiss the cross, that's it's a great way of engaging with the story, like kissing a baby's head and the smell that comes with it. Who knows what smell that cross originally may have had, but maybe the cross you have has some scent as well. This is Good Friday, an opportunity for us to embrace all of the human story, the ability to crucify simply because we don't understand to want to rid ourselves of the one healthy thing because we don't want to be healthy ourselves, only to realize how much we needed that health. And yet somehow the love of that healthy individual, that truly human one, Jesus, restores our humanity, gives us an opportunity to reach forth our hands in love so that we too can be that figure that venerates and cherishes and lifts others up. That's the story of Good Friday, the story of love, that love never ends and that love has the final word, a word that heals all things and restores all things. So wherever you are on this Good Friday, I invite you to call it good, to make it good, both by your sacred prayers and more importantly, by your loving service, following the path of the one who broke open the gates of death and trampled down death and creates for us a path of true resurrecting power loving power that can change the whole face of the earth. Take time this day to think and meditate. And now I'm going to leave you in silence.